This video shows you how to troubleshoot, fix or repair a squeaky belt and a squealing noise emanating from your car engine as well as the probable root causes. This noise is usually more evident and loudest when you start up the engine in the morning, when it's humid or wet from the morning dew, but subsequently drabs away or quietens after ongoing use. And now that we've pretty much talked about the problem definition, we will be simulating the problem reported in real time by opening up the hood or bonnet and starting the ignition to actively listen in for the squeaky or squealing noise. The probable fixes or solutions being preferred here are not a one size fits all and should be tailored bespoke to your requirements. On a balance of probabilities, there is a smokers board or myriad of reasons why the squilling noise or squeaky noise is emanating from your car's engine. To detect and simulate the problem reported and to understand why this has occurred, you will need to start the ignition, undo the bonnet or hood and perform a visual and audio inspection. Take note of the serene and tranquil environment prior to starting your engine. If the squealing noise from your car is intermittent and you're struggling to replicate the noise, then patronize a multi-story and underground car pack. The idea is take the car further away from the entrance because you've got a lot of noise over there. You know, take it to some serene or calmer area within the multi-level story car pack and if you have got a squeaky belt you should hear the audible squeaky belt noise in the tranquil environment as the multi-story car packs are essentially elementary building structures whose structural frame can either be reinforced concrete which encompasses precast and cast institute units or composite structures which encompasses steel beams, columns and supporting concrete slabs where wind loads, vibration and structural resistance to explosions are taken into account. Suffice to say, underground car parks produce strong reverberant effect that is harmful to his patrons but can also absorb most of these reverberant sounds often dangerously exceeding the 55 decibels range. So we can use its hard surfaced walls and floors, architectural surfaces, frames, pipes and ducts to our advantage to make the squealing or squeaking noise from our engine or belt more audible. As the enclosed space traps, reflects and amplifies noise manifold when compared to the noise in an open space or on our drive. So, audio inspect the noise coming from your car's engine in the non-loading bays or in the parking spaces not located close to the entrances as they contribute a higher noise level, which do not help with sound absorption trapping sound, soundproofing, or acoustics. And the reason behind this theory is that I found out that the noise coming from the engine or the belt became more evident at the pictures or cinemas when the car was stationary with the engine running in the parking bay of the multi-level story car park. So I will start the ignition of the car engine in real time on the drive and proceed to visual and audio inspect the noise from the engine. Take cognizance that your serpentine belt, your drive, fan, accessory, ancillary, auxiliary and alternator pulley view belt are one and the same. It should not be confused with your timing and cam belt which are one and the same and your timing and cam belt should not be confused with your timing chain. The serpentine belt is a single continuous belt that drives a myriad or multiple peripheral devices in the automotive engine. Suffice to say, it is a drive belt that works with idlers, tensioners, pulleys, power steering, the aircon compressor and the alternator and pulleys within the accessory drive belt system. 
before the defective serpentine belt is replaced, make sure that you draw out the root map of your auxiliary belt so that when you swap it in for the replacement belt, you know exactly the route from whence it came from. As different car brands and models have got an auxiliary root drive belt system that is peculiar to them, so make sure that you make a note of the route of your fan belt or drive belt, okay? Whereas your timing belt keeps the camshaft and the crankshaft in time synergy. Suffice to say, this internal engine component synchronizes the rotation of the crankshaft and the camshaft. Although timing belt and timing chains serve the same purpose, the major difference between a timing belt and timing chain is that the belts are made of rubber composites, whereas the timing chains are made of metal. But for the purpose of the risk assessment done on this video, I will be limiting its scope to the serpentine belt. When you cut across the horizontal synthetic rubber ribs of the poly V belt or the serpentine belt, it reveals a base construction embedding compound, a polyester tension member and a polyamide cover fabric. The thin cross-section profile allows the use of the smaller pulleys that the standard V-belts handle speed ratios of 40 to 1. Okay, so the speed ratios remain more consistent and the output speed remains more uniform. So it's got the capability to track properly without special guides, flanges, crowns and deep grooves and also resists sitting in them grooves. So, if the advantages of this poly V belt or serpentine belt is increased belt and sheave life, reduced drive cost, consistent performance, you know, electrically conductive, conditionally resistant to oil, and being able to withstand a temperature range from minus 30 degrees centigrade to plus 80 degrees centigrade, when is the best time to change your drive belt or serpentine or pulley v belt even if the ribbed v belts have efficiencies similar to that of flat belts and can transmit more force power than your traditional v belt because of the more contact area under ideal circumstances you should aim to change your car's serpentine belt anywhere between 60,000 miles to 100,000 miles even if they're built to last a long time and that's because in the long run, the heat and friction from your internal components will wear it down. Other signs that are symptomatic or indicative of a failing or declining serpentine belt are performance loss due to unexpected drain battery, your power steering failure or a stalled engine. Another sign could be that your engine light is on. A squealing sound coming from your drive belt. A chirping sound coming from your drive belt. After contrasting both sounds, the sound emanating from the engine in real time is a squealing sound. The chirping sound was just for demonstration purposes. Belt noise is a sign that something is inherently wrong with the accessory drive belt system. And with a simple water bottle test, you can identify both belt noises and a solution for both. A squealing noise will typically increase in volume as the engine speed increases as a result of a relative slip between the belt and pulleys. To identify the cause of the noise whilst the belt is driving the accessory pulleys, spray some water on the rip side of the belt which is what we've got here. Once sprayed on the moving, spinning, squeaky belt, if the noise gets louder, the belt noise is a squeal, indicative of a tension issue. A volume change in the squeal with acceleration or added accessory load 
would also be indicative of a tension issue. If the noise goes away whilst the belt and pulleys are still rotating in situ, then you might have a bad belt or pulley misalignment. If the noise is present, then you might have a bad bearing on a pulley. And as previously highlighted, if the noise gets louder, then you might have a belt tensioner issue where the tensioner is too tight or too loose. Suffice to say, indicative of a bad tensioner pulley or a worn out belt due to age or shelf life. The tensioner has a spring loaded pulley which gives the right amount of pressure to the belt. But if the pulley isn't able to tuck the right amount of tension to the belt, it then results in slipping and squeaking. But if the noise in question is a chirp, which is a sharp, high-pitched, repetitive noise of short duration, usually worse at low engine idle speeds. But in contrast, if the belt speed is increased, the belt noise may blend into one audible noise with the high propensity or proclivity that it would most likely diminish in its intensity, go under the radar and reduce its susceptibility to being detected. Chirp noises become increasingly more apparent or evident when a short belt span enters into a grooved pulley. In most cases, typically after exiting a backside pulley, the water test prognosis for this would be to spray the rib side of the belt with water. If the noise goes away and returns once the belt dries, then the belt noise is a chirp, suggestive of a misalignment issue. If the pitch and volume stay consistent when you increase the speed, it is also indicative or suggestive of a misalignment drive issue. Suffice to say, the more the squealing, the higher the likelihood for tension issues, and the more the chirping, the higher the likelihood for misalignment issues. For misalignment chirp resolutions, ensure all accessory pulleys and brackets are tight and snug fit to their mounting surfaces. With a laser alignment tool or a straight edge, check the alignment of all pulleys and correct accordingly. With respect to their offset or alignment, inspect and replace all accessories and pulleys which have rotation difficulties as a result of seized and rough bearings or the accessories and pulleys showing excessive wobble or free rock. For tension corrective action, always make sure that you check the tension air for bearing noise and wear. Replace any tension air where the bearing feels rough or the pulley has run out. And also, as an extra precaution, whilst the belt is being removed, inspect all accessory pullers and eyeglass to ensure free and smooth rotation. If you find that the rotation is rough and binding due to a dry bearing, then the pulley and all the accessories should be replaced. Any serpentine belt that has been oil soaked must be replaced. Never try to resolve the issue with belt dressing. Suffice to say, if the belt is contaminated with past airing fluid, motor oil, antifreeze or any other petroleum based lubricants, it will weaken and cause the belt to swell and create noise. On vehicles with automatic belt tensioners, the tensioner arm should move smoothly through its entire range of motion with adequate tension, whilst the tensioner pulley should turn concurrently freely without binding as well. Manually tensioned applications should be checked for proper tension at £35 and then retensioned after 5 minutes of running at £30 per rib. A timing belt ensures the engine intake and exhaust valves open and close in time with the pistons to run smoothly. Whilst the serpentine's belt's primary function is to keep the engine accessories operating smoothly and efficiently. Suffice to say, the serpentine belt connects the engine crankshaft on the outside of the motor to all of its accessories. So it's important that this belt is in pristine condition and you can see that, you know, it suffered excessive wear and tear, you know, in the midsection of the cover of the V belt, okay? This could be due to age, to friction, or any of the probable causes that have been highlighted in this video. 
And so here, the defective belt has been swapped with a brand new serpentine belt. And if you look at the bottom cover of the serpentine belt, you can't see any wear and tear. And that's because this is a brand new one. Okay, it's not been misaligned. The alignment of the pulleys and, you know, the rotation of, of the bearings have been taken into consideration as well. As a healthy serpentine system depends on more than just the belt, the tensioner, the internal spring, snap nuts, idler and decoupler pulleys are all critical to an engine's performance and are designed to wear at the same rate as the belt. The tensioner controls belt alignment and worn pulleys can cause excess heat, noise and belt slip slippage all leading to the engine's failure. So by replacing all the serpentine system components at the same time, you equip your vehicle for many miles ahead. 90% of timing belt failure in your timing system is caused by tensioner or pulley failures. Replacing the components at the same time as your belt can prevent major engine damage. So if you can replace your timing belt driven water pumps when changing the timing belt as a faulty or defective water pump can cause engine overheating and breakdown which could result in costly engine repairs. Also note that a serpentine belt noise can arise from a fan belt starting to dry out. The squealing sound arising due to constant friction due to motion. The temperature coming from the engine can also make the belt dry and all these reasons will result in a weaker serpentine belt which can no longer maintain the required tension needed to grip each tensioner pulley properly linking the belt together. And so if the pulley begins to slip your serpentine belt will slip too producing that annoying squeaking sound or squealing sound that you hear. And so also inspect your belt for cracks as an old dried belt can crack at any time. Also ensure that your idler pulley is adequately tightened as it regulates the belt connected to the crankshaft and helps to move numerous engine accessories like your alternator, your power steering pump and the AC compressor. So if your idler pulley doesn't hold the serpentine belt in place with the right tension as it spins, the belt may slip and the annoying squeal will start. Also ensure you do not have a bad tension air by ensuring that the belt tension air provides the correct amount of belt tension to enable the serpentine belt operate optimally. As an old or bad spring loaded automatic belt tension air can become weak and make a loose serpentine belt fall off the tension air. You can tell you've got a bad tension air when you turn the steering wheel to the far left or to the far right or when you accelerate and still hear the belt noise. But if your vehicle utilizes a hydraulic belt tensioner where a shock absorber supports the spring of the belt, then the issues can manifest in other ways, like spotting a tensioner leak or hearing a rattling noise produced by the serpentine belt. And now that we're pretty much done with inspection, the probable causes, the root causes, the corrective actions, the troubleshooting and the swapping of the belt, let's listen to the sound coming from the new swapped belt. Click on the link in the description for how to fix a stop locking knot, how to pressure wash your cars, how to fix a humming noise coming from your car steering, and how to fix a squealing and grinding noise coming from the braking system of your car wheels, and other car useful tips. And that's about it really. If you found the information useful, don't forget to subscribe, like and share. Helps the channel grow and hopefully catch up with you later. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening. Goodbye.